Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Slam of Wrestling. Myself, Supreet, and this is your AEW Double or Nothing review. And I am joined by Abhishek Aneja, aka Abby Maniac. What's up, Abby? I am absolutely fine, Supreet. How about you? I am doing good, man. What a great show this was, man. I think Tony Khan, Tony Khan had to, you know, save his ass, you know, after the recent controversy. So it was a win-win situation for him. Yes, absolutely. This was such a show that uh, uh, you know I have no words. Uh, seriously, the crowd made this show, and you know the start of this show was absolutely ballistic. You know the ovation. Uh, you know, Hangman Page received just made this show. Uh, you know, and it gave us the direction to what uh, you know we were expecting from this show. Absolutely fucking amazing. You know, I would. Uh, you know, I was really. You know, I was waiting. I was waiting for the crowds to come back and fucking. You know, the AW crowd is. You know, pre-lockdown. The shows were epic, and this was why uh, you can say that uh, we watch AEW for the first uh, place. You know, the crowds and the energy, you know, fucking amazing. And uh, we didn't expect the uh, packed crowd in Delhi's place to you know be so hot. Imagine what other places uh, gonna sound like when they start touring. Yes, absolutely. It would be fucking ballistic, and you know, all out has been announced for September, I suppose, in Chicago. So, I am really expecting a uh, you know fucking amazing crowd. And then we can you know start our rumors of CM Punk again. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. And they also announced full gear for uh, Saint Louis. So that's that. Yes. Mm. Yes. Uh, I guess it's November, I suppose. Yeah, that I think that's your typical, you know, AW scheduled, you know, in terms of pay per use. I think all out. Is it September or August? I guess it's September. So Possibly. there is some, you know, there is. If this is Memorial Day, double or nothing, we can then what is all out then? All out is, I guess. Uh, I think it it's was... lab- Labor Day. Mm. Probably. Probably. Anyways, man, uh, let's. Uh, we will, you know, uh, slowly, slowly get into you know the match card. You know, start from the buy-in, then go to the main card. But uh, before mm. that, if you are new to Slam Up Wrestling, then make sure to like, share, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. Uh, you can check out our previous content. Uh, everything you will need will be in the description below. So uh, let's start from the buy-in when we had one match. So this was Serena Deeb versus Rio for the NWA Women's Championship. So this, you can say it is a rematch from the tournament that they did a few months ago, you know, uh, before revolution where Rio mm. picked up the victory here. So uh, mm-hmm. uh, the fun, uh, there was an interesting situation. So Rio, you know, got the obvious babyface reaction. Serena Deep also got the similar type of reaction, but but uh, for one second, she forgot that she, she was a heel and she was, you know, playing off the baby face uh, reaction that was coming from the crowd, which was mm-hmm. hilarious. But, you know, <laughs> she, you know, quickly, you know, flipped the switch and, you know, did some fantastic heel work, you know, throughout the match. And and by the way, yet another solid, solid uh, Serena Deep match. What do you think about it? Yes. Uh, actually... There were a couple of matches that, uh, you know, I skipped through or I just, uh, you know, uh, you can say slammed through to be, you know, very precise with regards to the name of, you know, the brand of this podcast. 
so this was one of those matches i didn't watch i wanted to watch i would definitely because i have uh, you know read the tweets with regards to this match that it was a solid match and with regards to yes uh, serena d you know she i guess uh, returned last week or i guess two weeks ago so she uh, you know came with a new attitude you know from her injury and stuff like that and she is uh, you know portraying the you know yes she is a villain and you know she is pissed off with regards to uh, being you know on the sidelines and stuff like that so yes uh, you know she has you know uh, been solid of course she is a you know fantastic competitor and you said the winner for this match was serena deep like yes, absolutely hmm like there was I, uh, it was i yes. think it was going to be too much for you know giving rio the uh, nwa women's title yes it was for the title mm-hmm. there was no chance of rio winning and i have also heard some uh, you know i have read sorry i have not heard i have read some rumors with uh, regards to rio's contract being you know up and probably this was her last contracted match in aw so i am not sure with regards to she you know competing uh, moving forward in aw so there was probably no chance of her winning and also yes it was for the nwa women's championship so serena deeb is not uh, you know losing the belt because uh, you know nwa is having a pay per view uh, i guess the name is uh, into the shadows if i am not wrong and it is you know booked for june and they had their last show you know a week ago and they had booked a match uh, thunder rosa versus camille brickhaus and it was for the number one contendership solid match 15 to 20 minutes and it went to a time limit draw so right now it is not announced that what is happening with regards to this match probably they would book a three way dance with three competitors we have to wait and see uh, because i do not see uh, you know camille uh, you know who uh, has been booked so strong you know in nwa taking a pin and i do not see even thunder rosa taking a win, uh, taking a pin uh, you know because she has been you know so solid in nwa and you know aw so probably you know serena d is being booked as a heel so that uh, probably either thunder rosa or camille would be winning the match and would be taking the belt and the belt would be strictly uh nwa uh, pun not intended obviously so that would probably be the plans probably I, in terms of rio i think they were mentioning on commentary that uh, mm-hmm. as of now she has permanently moved to the united states and that's why you know she has been uh, her uh, duties regarding japan she is carrying through some websites so as of now she is here in the united states mhm let's see and in terms of the match uh, it was really good you know uh, like their previous encounter and uh, serena deep is ju- doing a fantastic job as a heel and that's uh, and that has made her more interesting first of all she is fantastic in the ring and now she has a edge to her and uh, the way she won the match like the match surrounded you know uh, with a uh, deep you know targeting rio's knee so you know this came to her advantage you know when she got her submission at the end the serenity lock and she did the mm-hmm. same thing like uh, the way she won the match against uh, red velvet like stomping mm-hmm. the leg or knee you could say and uh, making her opponent tap out so same situation here 
and by the way she is being called uh, the woman of 1000 holds now hmm yes it is also probably written or a merchandise probably so there you go man i think this the buy in match has already set the tone for double or nothing so mm-hmm. let's get to the main card but before we get to the main card we, uh, what did you think about uh, the uh, card you know the long card like the paper event about 4 to 5 hours what you think about that and what is it, uh, should that should they keep this concept moving forward or cut it down a little bit uh you know that is a you know a personal thing you know it has become a norm in the wrestling industry with regards to you know special shows or special pay-per-views being that long and you know booking matches and stuff like that and the special shows being that long you know uh if you compare it to you know wwe they also have such shows at so, least at least uh, for the last year or so they have slightly cut it down to one hour mhm uh, probably double on nothing and uh, you know is one of their you know special shows so they book it that uh, you know of that duration so that could be one of the reasons so probably the next uh, show that is all out probably that could be a little you know of the less duration and they are not you know that that is also the thing that they are not booking you know pay per views every month like wwe so it oversaturates you know everything and the storytelling is almost uh, you know fucking you know nothing obviously with regards to that because you cannot do you know storytelling with regards to you know what uh, you can say probably the writers you have or uh, the audience you are catering to and you know what you think in the in your head so probably so you would not be booking five hour pay per views every month so that would uh, be fucking you know insane you are having you know three hour show on a monday then two hour show on uh, friday and you also have uh, nxt and other you know shows as well so you know why would you book you know every month of five hour pay per view but in comparison to aw who are having you know pay per views probably every quarter or you know every 3 months or uh, stuff like that so you can be given a pass you know with regards to booking your you know show pay per view you know of the long duration and if you are you know asking my opinion so i would not want uh, you know a, such a special show sh- to be that long because you know it uh, you know uh, i get fatigued obviously with regards to watching the show that long in one go i would take a break absolutely or you know uh, nowadays skip. yeah or nowadays uh the norm for wrestling shows the big wrestling shows is you know split them into two days we have seen it with mm. wrestlemania we seen it with wrestle kingdom yes. we also saw mm-hmm. uh, them do with nxt takeover as well so they mm-hmm. can you know implement it with at least double or nothing probably but you know then uh, you know they the you know complain from the marks would be the same you know you are copying this you are copying that you know but it, it would be uh, it wouldn't be anything different <laughs> but uh, uh, let's get to the card man so they opened up with brian cage versus hangman page so can you talk about the back story between these two men how did we get to this spot uh you no know, we got to this 
primarily i could say that uh, you know there was a match booked between these two probably a few weeks ago and to everyone's surprise including us uh, brian cage got the victory you know uh, i threw out a conspiracy that probably you know adam hangman page got punished probably for what he uh, you know inadvertently did to ricky starks and you know ricky starks got injured with regards to the german suplex but nonetheless uh, you know it uh, gave brian cage some legitimacy with regards to that because we have seen that team taz were always you know involved in backstage segments and you know there were tensions built up you know in the recent times with you know brian cage and the other members of team taz that brian cage said at one point that i do not need you guys that i can do it on my own and also christian cage added fuel to the fire that you do not need uh, you know taz or other members of team taz and he also talked to the other members of team taz as well that you do not need taz you know to take care of you like babies and you can do you know shit on your own and this match was uh, you know booked or scheduled and uh, it was expected that team taz would have been at ringside with brian cage but last week on last week i should say you know 3 to 4 days on friday night dynamite you know uh, hangman page you know got in the face of you know brian cage and he sucked him in into a one on one you know bout and you know which didn't went well with team taz absolutely and it also added fuel to the fire obviously to the simmering tensions between team taz and brian cage and there's that and the match was a really solid man the crowd was into it you know first match Bra- hangman page is over they are trying to bring back the cowboy shit chance again which is good uh, brian cage he came out to you know looking like a terminator and that was uh, a, a sight to see so uh, we saw some you know big spots in this match you know cage he hit a, you know f5 from the second rope and before yes. that he would uh, superplex him through the uh, entrance ramp uh, mm. so uh, page was not going down so uh, brian cage was looking to hit a buckshot layer of his own but hangman page would duck and hit a f5 of his own so at the end you know like you said team taz would uh, get involved and they also uh, sent a chair but uh, cage was not ready to use it so cage was a little distracted page hits the buckshot layer it for the win and that's it while page was celebrating with a post match beer cage you know had a uh, argument with ricky starks so page was about to hit starks but Stark said that he has injured neck you can't lay my hands uh, so that's going to be a theme going on you know that now that uh, it's official that there are dissension between this between cage and the rest of the uh, group so there you go yes as it it was a fucking solid match absolutely and a great hot start to this pay per view and yes absolutely you know uh it was in the plans obviously that you know uh, ricky starks versus brian cage was supposed to happen you know but you know uh, things didn't go as per you know plans but uh, nonetheless you know uh, you could say that whatever happens it is for the better and uh, perfect storytelling with regards to this match people could say that it was booked and stuff like that but the fact is that yes uh, you know these guys have uh, you know i would suppose i have not seen hangman page uh, probably as much as i have seen brian cage performing in pwg so you know they could give the hot start matches absolutely they can so you know and uh, with regards to perfect uh, you know storytelling 
in the ending moments of the match as you uh, you know said the interference from team taz costed brian cage the match so you know we would see that moving forward how it comes about and how is ricky starks you know healing from the said injury and how and you know finally when this match that is ricky starks versus brian cage you know when does it happen finally probably all out probably dynamite we have to wait and see that how serious is in the injury and uh, you know when can it finally happen and with regards to the crowd you know they were into it yes absolutely they were into it and it was a theme i could say for the whole night you know they made that show you know and it was enjoyable it was entertaining to watch the whole show every match had something even you know if you could say that this match was a little less and probably like that but the fans involvement makes it you know up a notch and also if the you know competitors are you know feeling a little low fans give them the energy and you know they also you know go you know two three times up a notch and you know they bring it out of themselves and give you a fantastic show and something to remember for you know times to come like uh, this is how you should open a pay per view uh, no matter uh, which what company you are yes absolutely but uh, let's uh, talk to the get to the second match this was a championship match for the aw tag team titles young bucks versus john moxley and eddie kingston so kingston and moxley came out with the stolen air deers or jordans you could say of the young bucks so crowd tried to you know uh, sing wild things but uh, yeah so uh, they also mentioned on commentary that this was eddie kingston's first time in front of a live crowd live aw crowd so that was a great moment for him the crowd was uh, very very behind eddie kingston so that speaks a lot uh, what uh, effort he has put into in this whole pandemic era yes absolutely um he deserves all the glory uh, you know that uh, you can say that he has worked uh, you know quite a bit in his whole career and you know just prior to coming to aw he was you know uh, doing you know create shit in nwa power to his promos they were hugely engaging and you know people were seeing you know you could say a, a you know a large chunk of the aw audience were also uh, you know tuned into nwa power you can not deny uh, you know his talent and with regards to the mic to that resonates with the crowd and you know you have the mic skills you can resonate with the audience and you know uh, you know you can become a star in no time the mic skills it makes you it fucking makes you let's talk about this match so so far this was match of the night you could say even though you know i gave it a 3.25 but uh, what <laughs> you think about this match man is i also thought that it was uh, you know one of the you know best matches of the night and it had a amazing you know chaotic start uh, you know to the bout and the young bucks paid an homage to seth rollins his you know amazing trip <laughs> and the less less talked the better and you know moxley and kickstern you know kicked the shit out of uh, of the brothers pre bell of course around the ring and at one point we also saw carl uh, anderson and dog gallows you know interfering but uh, they you know didn't give any dividends whatsoever and you can say that uh, you know it was a very competitive hard hitting bout between the two teams and uh, 
you know there were many you can say people who were you know skeptical or probably they were thinking that uh, you know kingston and moxley could you know probably go home with the belts because they are such you know amazing talents and you know probably they won't be you know going down and young bucks would be losing the you know belts i was probably you know thinking that uh, you know if you are doing the booking and with regards to you know the whole group that they are calling super elite so they should be carrying on with the belts and have a you know lengthy title reign and then if uh, if no if is probably not a right word there is a team that uh, should be thrown and be the you know top baby faces of the company they should be the one to be thrown there so not right now you know there is a huge story behind that and then it probably happens so that should be a lot better you know scenario rather than you know moxley and kingston taking the belt and going off in you know this match probably and uh, there were a lot of near falls so that you know adds to the emotion and investment from the crowd so that is obviously one of the brilliant stuff that happened in this match four incredibly talented you know uh, sports entertainers professional uh, wrestlers going at it and moxley at one point got busted open with the cold spray tan uh, can so that also added to the intensity so all in all uh, you know fucking brilliant match and uh, speaking about highlights we also had uh, you know uh, moxley getting the melser driver on the uh, ramp so mm. uh, i think from that instance they tried to make moxley look like a monster you know kicking, kicking out of a one count and all you know taking out the bucks at once so yes. uh, we also see uh, mox and kingston so they hit a death while uh, death while not the death while what what's it called a electric chair like a move, you know what do you call it a uh, doomsday device yeah doomsday device and uh, that didn't get the job done so they were going for that lariat uh, exploder combo but here comes brandon cutler mm. again so mm-hmm. we get to the end uh, it was moxley so he was being ma- uh, double teamed by b- the bucks so the bucks finish moxley off with punch of uh, bt triggers which looked uh, there were four so yeah that was that i think it that looked a uh, little awkward that was a bit too much you could say uh, they booked uh, you know moxley as a fucking monster and they had to because the fact is that uh, you know the team you are beating is you know fucking john moxley who has come from wwe who is a fucking you know worldwide superstar and eddie kingston you know who is you know uh, you know great wrestler of his own the fact is that you had to book him you know as a monster that even if he is losing and probably it is not uh, you know as clean as it should have but the fact is that you had to do it in such a way that uh, you know uh, he is a fucking monster and it was not easy to put him down you know that should be pretty obvious that should be pretty obvious because the fact is that if it were another superstar you know of such stature because the young bucks are not that uh, you can say you know have such a recognition worldwide that is uh, you know uh, Uh, we can agree on that you know they are not worldwide superstars but john moxley is and if it were any other superstar instead of john moxley probably he would not agree to you know <clears throat> putting over young bucks 
so the fact is that you had to book him in such a way that he is a former world champion you know and you know in different promotions and he is a fucking legend in you know in the current sport in some shape or form he is a future legend you can say so you had to book him that strong so they did that they made it pre- pretty amply you know obvious to us so you cannot even say or anyone cannot say that uh, you know the team of moxley and kingston were you know buried not at all and you can you know the finish you could make the excuse for you know uh, take moxley off for you know tv for you know at least a month or so you know uh, he has the baby uh, coming soon and uh, in the mm. meantime you could use kingston you know he could be continue his feud with the elite but uh, the end goal should be him challenging kenny omega yes yes they can do that absolutely but uh, you know we have to wait and see with regards to you know uh, will they be willing you know to you know take moxley off television because for them to he is a draw you know but probably they can right now probably they can afford that you know to yes as you said for the baby and it was in the plans to probably we were thinking the in the barbed wire explosion match that it was the in the plans that to you know uh send him off television you know it didn't happen probably now it can so it is up to the booker obviously so there's that obviously and so it, uh, there was one more thing yeah. uh, you know people were uh, you know com- complaining or probably you know jr was pointing it out too that uh, you know the teams were very much into you know the ring and the 10 count or the 5 5 count probably with regards to the double teaming was not being adhered as too much uh, in this match you know the second uh, guy who is the illegal competitor was in the ring amply ample of times so that was probably one of the complaints with regards to this match so at, at least know, it took out his frustration on the referee also hmm yes but uh, he probably isn't aware with regards to you know how these you know new wrestlers you know wrestle with regards to you know in pwg and ring of honor they do that shit you know they do that shit they have to get everything in so as to pop the crowd so they do that shit they don't give a fuck they don't so give that, a fuck so that that so that's the reason probably why probably lucha rules yo yeah, so that's the reason why he put over randy orton over kenny omega <laughs> uh you know there could be many reasons for that uh, but it is you know basically he is a legend he is not a yes man of the company it is his opinion we should not be you know offended or triggered with regards to his opinion it is his opinion that uh, you know randy orton right now is uh, you know best wrestler in the world so it is his opinion you know uh, you know it is not essential that you know you are working for a company that you should uh, you know choose your world champion as the best wrestler in the world i do not think that now jr is in a, such a you know place that he is a legend you know he has been in the you know wrestling business for such a long time so he can have his own opinion so and he should not be uh, you can say it, scared of you know expressing it you know and even if uh, we take it in a holistic perspective you know kenny omega right now is not uh, you know recognized worldwide 
yes in the future absolutely he would be and people from around the world would probably agree with regards to kenny omega being the best wrestler in the world everybody can have different opinion with regards to it and we should not be you know triggered with anybody's opinion and also to push your opinion down anyone's throat that you should also agree to my opinion that i think cm punk is the best wrestler in the world you should also agree on that or else i am triggered no absolutely not it's your opinion you might like someone else you like aj styles okay i like cm punk okay you know move on you um, so there you go so let's uh, get in, get to uh, continue sorry continue with the card so we had the casino battle royal so we had aw world uh, title implications or written all over so we talked about in the past how you know aw battle royals are a little complicated so what do you think about this casino battle, uh, battle royal concept uh you know it has its uh, you know it has its own charm of its own yes i you know remember you have complained about that in the past <laughs> but uh, you know it has its own charm you know it is uh, you know very resonating with the the name of the show double or nothing and you know the poker chips uh, you know stuff like that and uh, you know the suits you know the hearts diamonds spades stuff like that you know i have no you know problems with regards to that you know, it has its own charm it is different from uh, you know the competition or the you know land of the titans but yes it has its own charm i got no issues with regards to that what do you And, think about uh, the you know uh, when a certain group comes out they have all the wrestlers team uh, you know hitting and then the particular wrestler comes out and do you like that or you know they should have done you know the original version like they did for the first double or nothing you know if we had a group coming out then the entire group comes out at once something like that mm. they can uh, you know do that uh... the thing that you are saying uh, this time they did that uh, the countdown uh, you know uh, that it went about and then the wrestlers entered that probably happened and the first time uh, you said that what happened what was different you know i cannot remember you know what happened the first time when you know this battle royal was booked like they had the wrestlers uh, back then they had the wrestlers uh, once uh, your uh, group has uh, start one st- when the particular group enters and the wrestlers uh, come at once not like okay. you know okay. uh, different entrance evil, yeah if we had evil uno coming out he would have his entrance team then we had uh, anthony bowens coming out he would have his entrance team like they want mm-hmm. every wrestler to get a pop something like that yes and that is uh, you know uh, a thing of its own you know you are giving them each an individual wrestler a time to you know connect with the crowd you know it is a thing of its own you know you are pushing every wrestler you know all at once then the you know crowd can also you know cannot react to each and every one and if you are sending wrestlers one by one then the crowd also recognizes that even if they are you know new viewers to aw so they can also recognize if if they are unaware of any wrestler you know i am not saying that there is a certain wrestler but if he is not aware then he can be aware of that wrestler and he can know that this wrestler is this uh, he, his name is this and then you know he can you know uh, be connected to him that yes this wrestler is coming in and then he is you know fighting this and this guy and stuff like that so uh, you know this 
uh, you know the stuff which they did this time is probably a better uh, you know a better approach in my opinion with regards to all the wrestlers even the wrestlers who uh, we may not be as much invested as uh, we are you know uh, who even are not as much featured on dynamite as they are so it is a good you know opportunity for them to connect with the crowd so uh, we had the first group uh, they were christian power house horse justin roads matt sidel and max caster so max caster got a big pop so this uh, is saying things of what we could expect in when you know they go back to touring in july so he started dissing christian said that he used to be cool when he had a edge he also said he's going to catch side is slipping so i think uh, i don't know what happened with dustin roads i think he forgot his cue and think he was not probably, paying uh, probably someone said that he was laughing or something like or probably he was not uh, open <laughs> <laughs> to getting dissed <laughs> and uh, that kind of messed up the rap also for one second hmm probably but uh, he diss all three guys but he uh, didn't uh, wanted to diss you know power of sobs for obvious reasons yeah so yes. um, and by the way uh, the eliminations were very quick you know matt sidel i think he stayed for at least a minute you know we there the theme of the entire match was like this like certain wrestlers would be getting eliminated very soon mhm you know uh there probably their focus uh, you know uh would be on the people who are featured on dynamite and who uh you know have probably stories you know in and who have had uh, you know people invested in them they should be featured a lot more uh, you know they should have more screen time in comparison to the people who were just probably you know fillers and, that could be uh, one of the reasons so uh, moving forward so christian and hobbs so they have you know somewhat of a rivalry so they were you know going head to head uh, throughout this match so at one point both men were you know were spent spent majority of the time outside so when they eventually got in the ring so christian would get rid of hobbs so we had you know hardy uh, matt hardy and priat party working together so i think they messed up the cam- camera angle you know when Matt Hardy and Christian Cage went uh, face to face, so that was a missed opportunity. Mm. So uh, as we get to the end, so all the groups have come in, so we are left with the Joker, and it was Leo Rush. So he got a big reaction, you know. He is a big name, so he came in there. He also spent a little time, so but the time he spent, he did some crazy shit. so uh, we were left with uh, that last two men were jungle boy and christian cage and this crowd thank god christian didn't win if he won then his aew <laughs> career was over <laughs> and this crowd was not uh, ready to you know uh, see christian cage win they wanted jungle boy and so the last in, uh, face off you know we would see you know Christian was about to, you know, uh, push Jungle Boy, you know, when they were on the apron. But uh, Jungle Boy did a great save, you know, by you know just uh, like a literal Jungle Boy swinging off the yes. post and uh, saving himself. So we would see Jungle Boy getting uh, Christian, uh, so Christian Cage getting dumped, and this place exploded. Jungle Boy is the winner of Casino Battle Royal. He gets a world title shot in two weeks. There you go. Yes. Absolutely. And and it uh, one last point to add. I I think Tony Khan made a great investment. You know, uh, buying that theme song for him. Hmm. Yes, I would agree absolutely. That also, uh, yes, that also is you know 
getting him over you know more than he probably is and uh, with regards to you know you can say uh, christian cage even if uh, you know he has uh, lost his opportunity in this you know battle royal he can uh, you know get a shot anytime uh, he wants because uh, you know of the fact that he is a legend so they can book the said match if they want any time in the future so you know it it was a great decision you know to book jungle boy in this scenario absolutely and uh, yeah like it is predictable that jungle boy would not win the world championship you know it's kenny omega he is in a hot run but uh, i won't you know i won't be surprised if he uh, wins the tnt championship by the end of the year yes Qu- quite possible yes quite like, possible he as of now he has an established entity so he deserves a title reign yes i would agree with that absolutely but uh, you know you can have miro have a you know lengthy title run and uh, you can say that uh, you know as you were suggesting jungle boy can have a tnt championship reign and you know at the end of the year or you know uh, january february you know whenever you know they have a uh, a big you know celebration uh, you know a pay per view of some sort absolutely they can crown jungle boy as the new champion so uh, let's get into cody rhodes versus anthony ogogo so <laughs> here i th- here is where you know the crowd slowly started to you know cool off so as mm. of uh, the entire the rest of the match they were hot now they have started to cool off so i don't know man we uh, like universally this everyone reacted same to this entire feud but uh, like like i was saying you need, everyone reacted the same way to this feud you know with this political stuff getting involved and we would say see the same thing here like the crowd even didn't know how to react to this like who to cheer who to boo and i think aw even tried to you know cover up this whole situation like they before the match they had you know the whole uh, memorial day you know package video package talking about usa putting over uh, the country basically uh, you know just so you know we could have cody roads being cheered but that didn't happen what what was your reaction mm. towards this match <laughs> the fact is i didn't watch this match <laughs> you didn't even watch this no i didn't watch this match because i uh, you know i i read someone's uh, you know review it was under good match so i didn't watch that you know i didn't give a fuck because it was five hours long for god's sake you know why the fuck would i watch and uh, you know the thing is that uh, you know uh, coming into this match you know uh, it didn't uh, you know click in my mind that this was this match was specifically booked because of memorial day it was not uh, you know booked just out of the blue or to make uh, you know anthony ogogo look strong or stuff like that they booked this match uh, because of memorial day and that's why you know uh, cody rhodes also you know booked himself as you know american dream and uh, you know his father was in uh, you know in his time a character of the common people and he also had you know uh, a resonance of the you know a, a sort of patriotism so probably you know they had they had a you know a plan in their heads that we can book a match you know for memorial day and it would be you know uh, usa versus whatever country and 
obviously if you are booking a match uh, for memorial day so you cannot have you know the foreign you know guy going over obviously so that is what happened it didn't uh, you know happen that uh, because of cody roads being the evp and you know being the you know guy that is putting himself over over everyone no it didn't happen that way Be- because it was memorial day it had to happen that a usa guy wins and not a foreign guy you know wins obviously if it were another scenario that if it were you know some other day and they had booked with a mindset of another uh, you know another stuff that they are booking this uh, you know feud between two factions and the people are uh, one one you know representative are going at it and there is the you know a new guy that is anthony ogogo and the you know a veteran you know cody roads is going at it huge chance huge chance of anthony ogogo going over But, but they had booked in in such a way that you know there was no chance yeah like i said the crowd even didn't know how to react like there were you know some yes. rea- reactions like i would say you no know, anthony ogogo he he uh, i think this was the best way i seen him so far like he was actually mm-hmm. wrestling there is you know he, he does look you know somewhat of a green in the ring but he was doing better and uh, Cody so what happened was so he got in him you know his signature gut shot two he did it two uh, twice so uh, Cody was selling that throughout the match so as we get to the end uh, Cody Rhodes would get the win not why the crossroads but why the verti breaker that you know he has used in the past so that was it so we also saw the involvement of QT Marshall here and there so yeah that was your uh, entire match and uh, he they, they he could have put over anthony ogogo in that situation hmm yes if it were any other uh, you know day or you know time yes absolutely he would have he would have you know loved to do that absolutely but you know in this case they had to go that way you know it, and this whole thing yes. came off little forced i think yes and it was it was so it came out that way as well because it was you know how the promos were lackluster and uh, the recent dynamite uh, the way in you know the yes uh, i tweeted it out as well uh, you know the manual scale you know the, Paul White was also making fun of that. That what the fuck is happening? You know, you couldn't get you know digital scales. You know, is uh, you know Tony Khan you know not rich? What the fuck is happening? You know, they didn't give a fuck. You know, the the promos and you know fucking nothing. So people also didn't give a fuck with regards to this or. Th- you know if it were booked and they had you know invested in this yes this is a tried and tested you know uh, concept and we are not talking about cody's promos uh, you know in the focus groups obviously hmm. but this is a tried and tested you know concept from the 80s and the 90s you know one country versus another and stuff like that you know patriotism blah 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 so it could have worked but you know they should have booked that in such a way but you know today's crowd and the crowd which uh, you know aw is catering to is of the you know a different mindset you know and you know the borders are such in such a way and our mindset has also such changed that we have sympathy for everybody you know throughout the world we are not of such mindset that 
it is us against them that we have uh, you know uh, hatred towards any other country you know our consciousness has changed so much with regards to what we were thinking in the 80s and 90s and how we think today you know we think about people as people and not you know that he's a you know he's a pakistani or he's a american and you know we hate them blah 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 you know the times have changed so you know you are were booking a feud for memorial day you should have come up with something else you know a something you know creative this was you know lackluster this was uncreative and you know it received what was invested it in, in it absolutely the only positive you could say is about anthony gogo's ring work like uh, he finally mm-hmm. showed us that he could do a lot uh, you know he's not not just a you know typical boxer playing wrestler he could actually work in the ring yes absolutely the only you know we saw him as a only boxer and not a you know wrestler because he was booked in such a way and he was presented in such a way you know yes of course you know he would be you know getting better in the you know times to come absolutely so at the, they are you know still continuing this feud with uh, the uh, netmer family and the factory you know, you know we have mm. a bunch of uh, matches you know regarding both factions i think we got nick camarato and dustin roads in a you know bull rope match that was being teased and i think we have a tag mm-hmm. match you know with cody ogogo qt marshall and i think it is louis johnson so they could do something there you know uh, with the political stuff out of the window they could you know do you know uh, typical pro wrestling 101 try to get somebody over here yes they should and you know if you want us invested you know come up with something else and do uh, you know such a good job on the microphone that makes sense invested you know that's probably it and not force the feud you know, not force the stuff so uh from that we get to uh, miro versus lance archer this was for the tnt championship and i uh, i bet you also didn't check out this match as well because this followed that one so nothing yes. much here nothing much here we expected you know a great horse fight but i think it fell flat like the crowd was an into it like the cody agogo match uh, but uh they tri- they did try some you know uh to have a uh, somewhat of a decent match here so you know archer would initially uh, take out miro you know uh, choke slam him through a table uh, we would see miro he actually you know suplexed archer over the rails over to a bunch of you know uh, wrestlers that were you know sitting uh, in, uh, on the front in the front row so uh we would see jake roberts so the story was that he was taken out during the fan fest you know by miro so he would come uh, uh, make his appearance in the match and he b- brought the snake like he teased that he was going to you know introduce the snake but miro caught him and miro with uh, yet another cheap shot to you know uh, roberts and he took the snake back and he just launched it basically <laughs> basically we saw uh, animal abuse on a wrestling pay per view <laughs> so from there you know we would see a hope spot for you know archer he would get a choke slam but that didn't put out miro at the end uh, miro had archer for you know the game over uh, submission and there you go archer passed out and that's it we predicted that miro was ob- uh, was the obvious choice to you know just retain but it had to be at the expense of archer getting yet another big loss <clears throat> we uh, you know there was uh, someone commenting and uh, you know i also was thinking about that that you know uh, lance archer is getting 
you know back to back uh, you know losses in you know big match situations that uh, uh, is it did hurting his you know character his uh, stock in this uh, you know company and right now i think maybe at a booking standpoint i think it's time we separated him from jake roberts i think uh you know they can but uh, what about the you know the mic the mic mm-hmm. skills yeah like uh, there as we have, i think we have talked about it a lot you know they re- yes. use, re- use jake roberts rarely mm uh you know there is a, you know a theory probably you know you can think that way you know uh, you can think that way that uh, you know archer is getting this uh, losses you know if you are an optimist obviously you can think that way that uh, you know archer is getting these losses then uh, people would get invested in him in the sense that they would sympathize with that character you know and uh, you know in the coming time uh, you know when they would book him in such a you know situation when there is uh, you know uh, an opportunity for him to you know pounds and uh, you know get a huge win probably a title or something like that that then he would you know probably be getting the victory or uh, you know the championship belt then the crowd would uh, you know pop huge probably that could be one of the you know things that we could look forward to but other than that right now his character is uh, you know like this not uh, you know very uh, very much you know getting us you know on his uh, side that he is a murder rock monster but he always loses so what the fuck is he you know is he a monster anyway but uh, you know we do not see that you know we are not seeing that guy uh, but back to this mm-hmm. match uh, this mm-hmm. i think we said it you know a uh, couple of weeks ago that we didn't need it at this uh, tnt title match on the pay per view they you could have said it on mm-hmm. a dynamite instead yes And... they could have but uh... you know the pay per view pay day and you know uh, booking miro and showcasing him on pay per view was probably more important to tony khan so that is why he did that let's see man let's see uh we get to the next time we should match this was uh, dr brit baker versus hikaru shida for the aw women's championship So this is the match that you know they want to see Brit Baker you know win that uh, championship finally the crowd and they got into this match like they even supported Shida for a while so the match was pretty decent you could say uh, we had you know Shida sorry uh, Shida trying to uh, t- t- put down Brit Baker you know with uh, the moves he was the big moves like the falcon arrow and that running knee strike but Baker was not going down we saw some great near falls so uh, as we get to the end uh, brit baker would uh, finally get in the lock jaw submission and uh, shida was forced to tap out brit baker is your new aw women's champion we got a huge pop for uh, this one from the crowd what do you think about this match is uh, you know <clears throat> it was uh, you can say yes it it had to happen and we had uh, you know predicted that absolutely that this was the crowning of you know brit baker uh, for the women's championship and 
uh, you know they had put uh, you know stuff uh, in place in the recent episode uh, you know they came up with the new championship belt the bigger championship belt which looks uh, you know, kind of good yes uh, it does and the probably it is of the mindset that uh, they had to you know please you know bit baker in such a way that uh, probably her you know contract is uh, coming up so now she is such a you know huge entity in the you know professional wrestling world and they have booked her in, in such a way so they have to you know please her and that she doesn't go to the other promotion absolutely uh, in the promotion where his uh, you know babies yes absolutely and was, that goes vice versa too yeah you know so uh, there was yet another spot you know we had the involvement of reba she used her uh, crutch and she accidentally hit baker so yeah that was part of the you know some great near falls throughout the match so yeah we finally got brit baker as champion the thing we have been wanting you know since she kind of you know uh, started getting hot uh, thanks to her promos and then that uh, unsanctioned match and it the progress of this you know brit baker character has been great yes uh, i would agree with that absolutely there was uh, once there was a time that uh, you know uh, we were complaining about her you know in ring work and then you you know uh, suggested that she should be you know competing on dark and dark elevation and she was uh, you know pushed into that so and now you know she is a champion so there's that and what you think about the way you know uh, she was extremely over with the crowd compared to shida and that to yes, being absolutely. a heel you know it is modern day professional wrestling so, uh, you know they uh, you know booked her in such a way that she should be over because the fact is that uh, you know she is a woman and uh, you know in her match the unsanctioned match she was you know uh, bleeding buckets and even you know in her uh, bout against shida which was uh, you know probably you know some months ago uh, she had a busted nose and uh, then to she was busted open so you know people see that and they you know sympathize with that that uh, she then you know close the match and she didn't go away so they see the toughness and they respect that absolutely and yes the promos and you know they get invested absolutely and they booked her in such a way in an entertaining way the merchandise and you know how they presented her to the crowd that uh, you know the bad guy or bad woman you know the, with an edge uh, people love that you know so they they also booked that in such a way she didn't uh, you know she wasn't as you know uh, condescending to the crowd as you know the bad guys are you know for for instance uh, jbl you know i'm just you know giving an instance that people hate them and uh, you know they are a heel so that is a different set of scenario uh, a set uh a difference a different scenario absolutely but you know this is something different they book them in such a way that they get over with the crowd they you know uh, sell merchandise you know i think they uh, need to carefully book brit baker you know you, know, you can have the you know crowd doing the dmd but you know keep uh, keep her book her in such a way that she gets that he lead from uh, any crowd that uh, she performs in front of hmm but uh, you know we have to uh, wait and see probably they would be 
uh, you know making her a baby face probably sometime soon or she would be turning baby face because of the uh, audience reactions probably and the spot they uh, did with the you know rebel probably it, uh, it also added to that pop you know that she was able to you know uh, overcome the odds so it could you know happen that pro- probably she would be the uh, you know in the space where stone cold was probably you know many uh, you know a many chunk of his career the gray area that is not white is not black in the gray area that is a tweener tweener huh? so yes so probably she would be in that space funny enough so you said cool. that Funny enough, you said that because you know the promo she did on Dynamite, she mes- mentioned Austin. Hmm. Possibly. So let's see, man. And by the way, uh, Shida also got a, a great reaction from the crowd. She got a thank you, Shida. You know, chant. You know, for you know her title reign. You know, during the pandemic era. And by the way, look at it. What a great storybook ending to that title reign. Like she wanted yes. to, you know. You know uh, perform in front of a packed crowd she got her wish now <coughs> we move on to the next big thing that is brit baker so yeah yes a great story book ending yes absolutely also we had tony shivani you know they uh, brought him there you know to congratulate uh, brit baker so that is some story you know that has been going on when you know brit baker initially turned uh heal all that uh, months ago yes and you know uh, it is great in that way that uh, you know he you know embraced her and uh, you know that yes his character is also there you know it it, it has some progression with regards to the story But obviously it uh, you don't abandon you know yourself and you do not segregate your character you know because you are a commentator or uh, you know you are a piece of uh, you know the story so you also get involved and it was great you know and the crowd also acknowledged that so uh, moving forward you mentioned uh, tony shivani you mentioned commentators So Shivani briefly came into the ring you know he had a big announcement he talked about the, you know the upcoming show the new show AW Rampage so he said uh, they have a new analyst uh, for this show and in my mind uh, you know in my mind i was saying yes we are getting more on all mama mia but it's mark <laughs> it's mark henry <laughs> so he is the new analyst for aw rampage and uh, can you please you know clear my doubt uh, analyst uh, mean like he is in the broadcasting right for commentary right yes so uh, i mentioned more on anolo so i think he has to be the lead announcer for this show mm. possibly possibly he you know uh just uh, you know have some patience uh, you know we have to you know go with the flow and uh, you know wait for the announcement uh, you know it is a one hour show so let's see you know if they are you know willing to invest uh, you know for a one hour show with uh, mauro ronaldo or you know uh, they are going with the you know one of their uh, you know the announcers which they have currently so let's see probably what you are thinking that uh, might come true yeah if if you want to make rampage stand out from dynamite bring in moro ronald mm because yes. first of all you don't have you know jr only does dynamite he doesn't i think he doesn't care about doing elevation in dark so why put him in, in other show again like rampage have you, uh, somebody mm-hmm. else i think moro yes. would be perfect for that billing 
Yes. I I would agree with that absolutely. So uh, moving forward, we have Sting and Darby Allen versus Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. We know uh, this. You could also compare this with you know the TNT Championship match we had. Like this was this shouldn't have been on the you know the pay uh, per view card, but it you have you have a big name like Sting, so it made sense. And boy, this you know Sting, this guy over delivered here. This was an unexpected uh, banger on the pay per view card. Absolutely, this was uh, you know one of those you know moments that probably you were thinking that uh, you know how would Sting be you know performing at such an age and you know uh, he is now you know performing for the first time in you know six years uh, as an uh, in an in ring capacity. So you know this was fucking amazing, you know. I really, you know, was uh, very enthralled by this uh, match. In my opinion, it was an amazing match. You know, whatever Sting did and his moments, uh, you know, he made, uh, you know, everything. He made his minutes count and it was an amazing, amazing match. Uh, you know, absolutely. So... Basically, uh, if you are a wrestling fan, you see this match, you may wonder why didn't WWE do Undertaker vs Sting then? <laughs> I think somebody mentioned this on Twitter. That's why I'm bringing it out. Why, why did we yes. get this match? Either uh, Vince's ego was running wild, or Undertaker's running uh, ego was running wild. Hmm. Possibly. Possibly. Uh, the thing is that probably. You know, uh, they were willing to do this match, but uh, the thing is that they were thinking of probably, you know, Undertaker going over. So probably one of the, you know, parties were not uh, willing to do that because they booked the first match uh, and you saw, you know, uh, Triple H going over. And then the second match too, when you see uh, Undertaker going over, then, you know, your legacy is, uh, you know, fucking, you know, uh, a bit ruined in a way. So, or, you know, uh, your character and uh, whatever you have built, you know, it goes down a notch. So, they wouldn't have come to and uh, you can say an agreement. So, that how you can book this match or probably a few you can have multiple matches so as to make sure that you know both the guys can be uh, you know book or you know or look strong in such a way but probably they didn't uh, you know came up with such a situation they weren't able to and probably it wasn't meant to happen. So it didn't. But at least uh, Sting is getting some good closure on his career. Yes. This match, uh, you know, gave us such a, you know, brilliant uh, high with regards to his ability. You know, uh, we probably wouldn't mind him you know, competing, you know, in uh, another match or two or probably, you know, more if he stays, you know, consistent and uh, stuff like that. He would probably not be, you know, on a regular, you know, basis. He would not be competing absolutely. But, you know, whenever he competes, it would be special. You know, it would be a special attraction. So uh, let's talk the highlights of the match, man. Uh, I think other than Sting and Darby, uh, Ethan Page was actually good, and you know uh, it is confirmed that the he he could be a great, you know, uh, if you see the crowd reaction he was getting. Hmm. Yes, he has been great, and he has worked hard, uh, you know, 
for a long time and he is getting his due and he has also you know worked on his look uh, from the time he has come from in impact wrestling from aw so he was very serious with regards to you know coming to aw and then performing at an eye level uh, people look at that you know his uh, look and stuff like that you know you can say you know you can say on social media that people do not care and stuff like that and uh, you know uh, you are perfect and blah 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 but the fact is that uh, you know your look uh, the backstage ex- executives and also the people who are watching you know the product wrestling they give a fuck and there is a mindset that comes into play so the fact is that yes ethan page has worked hard and he is getting his due absolutely competing in a match against uh, darby allen and sting you know he is getting his due and you know the spot which he did you know throwing darby allen into the crowd fucking that you know it, it took it away you know and they are, and, i think they also mentioned that uh, that is darby allen's whole uh, crew or family yes yes it, it was his crew or family and that spot they both have uh, done in their uh, singles match uh, in the past uh, that was in uh, evolve uh, in uh, 2017 i saw a clip uh, i came across this clip on instagram so so uh, commentators throw back yes. like you were saying uh, commentators were you know bringing up the history between you no know, page and uh, allen you know when we uh, get to that big spot so uh, as we get to the end we sting by the way sting they sting was in some spots initially you know scorpio sky you know suplexed him on the ramp sky was you know uh, Uh, playing off to the crowd but here comes sting no sells that suplex and just shoves him from that poker chip he was standing in <laughs> and he does a uh, big cross body from the top that was his first big spot so uh, when sting got that hot tag you, you know he did somewhat of a code red you could say on ethan page yes so uh, final part of the match saw both sting and uh, scorpio sky legal so sky was you know going for a uh, selling shot cutter you could say but uh, sting caught him and hit the uh, scorpion death drop instead great spot so that's how the match ended brilliant stuff here yes absolutely that uh, scorpion death drop out of nowhere that also you know uh, you know got a great pop and you know people also remembered his uh, you know his special stuff you know the stinger splash and uh, the you know his submission maneuver the uh, you know what the fuck that uh, the way we very no sense stuff yes and very yes, no sense stuff absolutely. and just that uh, chest beat that was that signature thing right there yes absolutely and uh, we probably uh, didn't even you know uh, see that stuff uh, in his match in wwe many of the uh, the stuff but here we got you can say the full you know full arsenal full package of sting and it was fucking amazing and you know? so where does darby allen go next is will they you know try to you know experiment with a potential tag match or he goes after the tnt title again mm. uh right now you know the stage is wide open if they are going for a singles feud you know darby allen versus any of these uh, any of the two guys probably ethan page so they can go there and if they are thinking something else then we have to wait and see that uh, what is there in store 
right now probably we, we can conclude that probably things between the two groups is over yeah. but if they are thinking of uh, you know stretching it prolonging it then uh, you know let's see let's see and by the way this tag team uh, thing with page and sky it, it does feel you know uh, kind of unnecessary in, even though they both you know work together very well what do you think about that scenario um uh, probably they they can uh, you know work as a tag team as you know they are uh, they both uh, have worked in you know tag team scenarios ethan page was the tag team champion in impact wrestling with uh, josh alexander so he has you know in his uh, you know in his veins you know tag team wrestling and scorpio sky can also do that the fact is that you know people uh, you know being booked in single scenario that would uh, you know right now with regards to screen time is a little difficult for <clears throat> the booker instead of booking them in such scenarios that is you know in groups or in tag teams so probably they would uh, prefer more to book them in tag teams and stuff like that and right now uh, we were also told in this match that Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky are rank number 2 and they were undefeated before this match so if they are thinking of uh, probably you know pushing them towards some sort of you know tag team supremacy or tag team title reign in the you know distant future so you know they can keep this group uh, this tag team you know in place then we can see some stuff no even if they are thinking that not on this show and on the other show so you know we can see some stuff let's get to the aw world championship match it was a triple threat kenny omega orange cassidy and pack and i think aw you know saved the best match of the night for you know their world title so what you think about the match man it was i think this was the match of the night for me what you think as i also thought that this was an amazing match and uh, you know as you said uh, you know one of the best matches of the night absolutely and this uh, you know uh, don callis is amazing you know on the commentary booth uh, he is you know every time he is uh, you know on commentary his presence in the booth you know it you know gives you know the fans uh, you know sitting at home you know another you know a spice of entertainment of its own you know uh, you know when he entered uh, the commentary booth uh, he was saying uh, you know already burying kenny omega <laughs> 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 so that was okay <laughs> a uh, great chuckle <laughs> so with regards to that and uh, you know uh, there was back, another spot there was uh, before you move yes. there was another spot regarding mm-hmm. don callis when you know mm-hmm. he saw that kenny omega is about to lose the title he just left the yes. commented <laughs> yes and that also when said that is common sense you know that is logical so that you know comes into play and that doesn't look fake at all and that you know comes into your being that that is uh, real and it is logical that if you see your uh, you know representation your guy losing so you go at ringside and to make sure that he wins and stuff like that and then he at one point uh, you know uh, took out the referee and you know there was a two count and then crowd was chanting fuck you don fuck you don there you go so that also reaction. yes uh, that is fucking amazing it probably would have you know brought back memories from ecw he you know was uh, then uh, portraying the guy from the network from the channel that uh, they were uh, you can say 
in a way they were portraying the guy that is that uh, from tnn i suppose that they weren't you know uh, airing you know advertisements they weren't publicizing that uh, you know we are airing on you know tnn ecw so they made a character of its own that was probably cyrus the virus so that was his character so you know people were uh, you know very you know angry obviously on uh, don callis so that would have brought back memories and uh, with regards to pack uh, you know uh, it was also told to us uh, that pack has beaten you know that was pack has beaten omega twice and he has also beaten cassidy you know once so you know that is you can say logical that he was in this match in a way and other than that you know pack looked amazing in this match uh, you know stuff that he does uh, you know he is a great competitor no doubt about it and he looked amazing and at the end cassidy came very close to winning but can you make a you know the self you know portraying belt collector is you know retaining the championship and is going forward with the championships so uh, i had that uh, the two spots in the match which were great was uh when cassidy and omega you know were exchanging those uh roll up pins you know that 1 2 1 2 uh, here comes back with a 450 to break that whole uh, spot yes so yes. Uh, there was another spot where you know omega was about to hit the one wing angel on pack but you know pack would you know would counter that and knock in his uh, submission that brutalizer so mm. orange cassidy came in he kicked omega and that sent pack flying outside the ring and mm-hmm. uh, you know we would see cassidy go for several near falls on omega so crowd was you know actually ready to you know have uh, cassidy as the world champion here so the main spot you know where cassidy had omega i think what happened i think someone took out the referee i think it was omega right yes yeah, it was, was omega and he was uh, trying to hit everyone uh, sorry pack with every championship he has so mm. at the end uh, cassidy came in hits the orange punch referee is knocked out so we had uh, aubrey edwards coming out to be the referee of the match so he, uh, i think he wasn't able to get the victory instead uh, omega at the last second uh, caught him in a crucifix spin and that was the surprise win basically omega stole the win here yes and uh, you know it also uh, didn't hurt uh, you know any of the other guys because it uh, you know it was basically a, you can say a roll up of uh, you know shots that crucifix uh, pin for attempt just you know out of nowhere and he got that victory so it didn't uh, you know quote and quote bury anyone and you know they can you know keep to themselves the fact that uh, you know there were many you know uh, shenanigans involved and this can happen to anybody so it didn't lower the stock of anybody so it was a safe you know uh, thing that was pro- uh, that was booked with regards to Kenny Omega still being uh, the world champion so great stuff and Amazing now I, and now i think aw is gonna you know start concentrating more you know to make this title reign seem more important you know put him in you could have you know he could have some great matches here and there you know in two weeks here we have that jungle boy match uh, but he, he needs one solid feud maybe that uh, maybe eddie kingston is that guy you know to uh, have a important feud i would yes uh, it, it would be great i would agree with that but probably they are not doing that uh, you know they are probably stretching that 
for the you know future or it can be that they do not see uh, you know Eddie Kingston you know as world championship material uh, okay. you know it all goes to the look you know the look at least uh, that, uh, they could uh, use Kingston to just elevate Omega yes they can yes they can the fact is that uh, they they don't uh, you know they won't book that uh, you know uh, that match to a uh, on a pay per view because it doesn't go with the you know the look you know it it is the mindset you know because the fans when they would see the guy they they it doesn't uh, you know resonate the you know if it were uh, you know if you ask me i would go with that absolutely i would want uh, you know to watch the guy because the fact is that uh, you know he is you know talented and he is great on the microphone so you know and the the guy who is eddie kingston he has to get uh you know he has to go the extra step to make sure to get a title shot you know he has to get over huge with the crowd then only he can get the world title shot so you know uh, we have to wait and see so that uh, you know if he goes over with the crowd you know in a massive way then we can expect uh, you know can you make a versus eddie kingston yes we know that uh, eddie kingston won't be winning the championship but the fact is that the mere manifestation of the match happening that also requires kenny uh, eddie kingston to be over huge with the crowd so let's you know let's yes. you know uh, think of the positive it would probably happen and he would get us invested absolutely with his mic skills probably kenny won't be able to you have don callis for that job yes absolutely and by the great. yeah by the way uh, speaking about pack and orange cassidy and i think their end game is you know maybe a, a six man match in the future six man match in the future uh regarding their uh, particular yes. trios mm mm-hmm. mm-hmm. possibly possibly so you are thinking uh, can you omega and the good brothers versus uh, best friends no no i was uh, talking about pack and orange cassidy all right regarding so their pack trios. and uh, your death triangle versus uh, best friends mm mm-hmm. mm possibly but they can go yes absolutely they can go so that's that and uh, let's get into the final stuff the stadium stampede so this was between the inner circle and the pinnacle so you could say this was the blow off match or are we expecting yes. something else from both these factions i would not uh, you know be um, thinking that uh, now there is anything left this was the you know final nail in the coffin of this feud and you know it's done it's done it's and by done. the and by the way what was your reaction when this match you know ended the show over the world title match yes, i many think many people were complaining yeah i think you have the same thought uh, as uh, i do like i think the mentality was they wanted to send the crowd happy hmm yes send the crowd happy and you know yes that was probably the thing yeah. yes the fact is that yes uh, you know we would be thinking yes you know the world title match was absolutely you know fucking ballistic and you know it was amazing but uh, yes the stadium stampede you know it was also you know great in its own right 
no it wasn't as probably enjoyable to me also i enjoyed the world title match a lot better uh, a lot more than this but you know uh, it is what it is and you know they wanted to book this mm-hmm. match because you know they had to end this feud and it was their last match and the stakes were this that if the inner circle you know which was formed in their you know debut episode you know if they lose then they would disband and chris jericho is also involved that uh, one of the if not the top guy of your promotion is involved in this so you know they had to make sure that it is their top priority and people are involved in this and he is one of their top draws absolutely and you know the story with regards to sami guevara was also chipped in which uh, probably i was not in uh, you know thinking of that as much you know probably you know if they uh, you know probably they had uh, you know sold it on their countdown to double or nothing but uh, sami guevara story that uh, you know he has endured uh, the you know brunt from mjf he had to get his retribution uh, you know leaving the group then coming back and he had to get his vindication in this bout so you know that was uh, the whole you know scenario for this bout and uh, uh, like you said did you like the pre- uh, last year's uh, stadium stampede uh i enjoyed it you know as much as it it, it was you know it had uh, it had a lot of comedy elements to it yes i i liked it uh, you know probably not as much uh, you know i do not recall it <laughs> much but yes i you know i found it uh, you know entertaining i think this this year st- stadium stampede was just there mm-hmm. kind of did... if you want to compare uh, last year's one mm-hmm. uh in your words uh, you are saying that it wasn't as enjoyable as last years mm, yeah i think you know their uh, you know mentality was that this year they wanted to make less comedy but at the yes. end of the day the stip- this match is uh, presented in such fashion that there has to be comedy elements here and there hmm and there were uh, li- uh, but in a very subtle way yeah uh, you know here and there but the one fact i liked is that we didn't expect you know the fight to go from the field and the stadium to a live crowd so that was yes. uh, a shocker yes uh, that was a shocker but uh, you know it was also great in such a way that to end the show you are getting such a you know huge uh, you know reaction from the crowd and crowd was brilliant throughout the night so they had to do that you know was it a, you know planned all along or was it planned uh, in the at the start of the show i don't know but whatever it was uh, it was uh, you know it was a great decision in my opinion and yes uh, you know we had talked about it in the uh, you can say in one of the previous reviews that was there a need of uh, booking a stadium stampede just after blood and guts you know uh, we had said there was probably no need or probably you could have chucked one of them you know out the window so probably you know a better thing was uh, you could have chucked blood and guts out of your thing and you could have booked this uh, stadium stampede straight up right now on this show because you had also told that uh, the story that last time when inner circle uh, you know uh, performed in this match they lost 
so you know there was this story that they wanted to win this time so okay you know but you know you could have done that you know shaft blood and guts out the way you could have had that probably you know you could have left it and someone else could have had it in the future so let let's talk some highlights so we had uh, the pinnacle at least uh, you could say mjf he came out uh, in a limo uh, in, on the football field so in a circle they made their entrance through zip lines which was somewhat of scary but looked cool at the same time so uh, so the match was laid out in a fashion where you know we had a bunch of guys wrestling you know in different location for example if we had jericho and mjf wrestling you know in kitchen and in a uh, conference room Office you could area, say yes. yeah hmm. uh, we had uh, santan and ortiz and ftr they were wrestling in a bar so we had actually conan i was expecting hmm. this guy was going to show up and he did <laughs> he was the dj in that uh, you could say a bar or club you could say and uh, we had uh, Sean Spears and Sammy Guevara going out you know at one point you know uh, Spears was in a room that was in a custom made filled with chairs and we had the big guys Hager and Wardlow beating the shit out of each other so like i said before all the action led to them entering the live crowd the live arena so uh, the wrestlers that were in the ring was actually Spears and Guevara and before they get, get to the ring uh, guara would actually uh, run over uh, spears with a golf cart that is a actually <laughs> a throwback to last year's uh, stadium stampede and the whole uh, thing with guara that was going on in the pandemic era so uh, they introduced uh, so spears was hitting with chair shots to guara guara was not able guara was not going uh, willing to go down so as uh, guara was, was was finally in control and he got some revenge on spears you know did that chair spot in that corner and ended the match with a 630 and that was it and the one thing i realized is this is the uh, you could say the first big win for sami guara in aw mm-hmm. if that's the case then it's uh, it's brilliant like most of the case he has been seen you know jo uh, taking the l but this time he finally got a big win and that too in a big mm-hmm. paper you scenario mhm that's great uh, you know uh, some people were saying that he is a new uh, you know leader of the inner circle <laughs> but uh, you know uh, that's not the case the fact is that they were uh, they put him uh, you know on the pedestal and they are putting him over you know uh, he uh, has been put over and they are you know building him up as a you know a superstar you know if you go throughout the journey so to speak in this also instance he was the center of attention with regards to the storyline that he was the one who left the group you know mjf missed with his head, head you know and if you go back to the debut episode who fought with cody rhodes in the first match of the night it was sammy guevara who yes and who was the guy who you know just you know and in the end of the match he just backed off you know it was sammy guevara and then in the formation of the inner circle enter sammy guevara the low blood cody roads sammy guevara and then uh, if you recall uh, the broken skull sessions chris jericho put over sammy guevara huge throughout the interview you know they are fond and they are putting him over huge you know uh, him being sami guevara and they are you know seeing the future in him and they want him to be the next you know superstar in aw 
so there's that in his own right and you know he was even uh, before just before joining aw he was a champion in one of the promotions in pakistan so he has you know traveled around the world so uh, you know there's that so you know he can be a huge superstar in the future he's already on the verge of that he's already you know in that in the big group and he's all separate as an individual performance getting over and now they have finally gave, gave him a big win here things are looking good for him yes yes absolutely like right now they can't probably give him the championship or you know uh, stuff like that or they are holding back that thing because he is in a group and he is being featured huge uh, he is the young guy because uh, you know the group has lax jake hager chris jericho and him he is the young guy and they are wanting him to get over huge with the crowd so that you know whenever the time comes to be the tnt champion or be the world champion so uh, it can come you know in the near or in the distant future so it can come smoothly it doesn't you know feel that it is pushed or it is thrust upon you so you know they are doing a good job with him and you know there's that and you know uh, to conclude the stadium stamp it had some storytelling elements so that's a plus yes absolutely there you go man that was entirety of double or nothing like we said a great pay per view and it, it has basically set the tone for you know the rest of the pay per views from both uh, wwe and aew you know that they are going to have crowds now they have double or nothing has set the standard now to have a how to have a uh, stellar pay per view yes absolutely let's see you know uh, someone was uh, you know i was just uh, you know going you know through the you know youtube uh, feed and there was uh, someone's uh, review that was that uh, after double or nothing how can you you know go through this bullshit and it was probably you know uh, wwe monday night raw review <laughs> so you know uh and nothing to you know complain or uh, you know stuff like that from my side because you know i uh, i am refraining from uh, you know complaining about the things that uh, you know i am not watching currently but the fact is that yes you are saying yes double or nothing absolutely has you know set a standard you know right now for the shows to come yes absolutely So before we leave man where can these guys find you Guys uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at abimaniac and uh, I am currently working with an independent wrestling promotion in India called Wrestle Square and uh, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel at abimaniac as well You can find slam up wrestling on Twitter at slam up w Instagram at slam up wrestling you can catch this review in audio uh, platform as well like spotify and anchor so this was the aw dynamite review and we'll see you guys uh, did i say dynamite review <laughs> <laughs> yo this yes, was you did <laughs> this was the double or nothing review and we'll double see you guys next time